Have you ever wondered what nothing is in the universe? Is it really empty or does it hold more than meets the eye? Welcome to the enigma of nothingness. Far from being a simple void, nothingness is a state that carries information. It's not a natural state. And it's not just about what's absent. It's about what's present in a different form. It has its own definitions, its own descriptions. So, nothingness is not as simple as it seems. It's a special state with its own complexities. The first layer of understanding nothingness takes us to the Big Bang Theory. Here the nothingness is actually a state called singularity. In this state, matter, information, and space-time cease to exist, and all known physical laws become invalid. Think about infinity. At the singularity, the density energy is infinitely large, while the volume is infinitely small. This simultaneous existence of infinitesimal and infinite makes it uncalculable. So, the singularity or the nothing at the base point is a state filled with infinite possibilities. But as with any theory, the concept of singularity brings about its own set of questions. The first is about its ignition. What triggered the singularity to explode? What was that initial spark? The second pertains to the failure of known physical laws at the singularity, including causality. This challenges the very existence of singularity. If cause and effect can't reach it, can it even exist in our universe? These questions further complicate our understanding of nothingness and its role in the universe. The second layer of understanding nothingness takes us into the fascinating world of quantum mechanics. Here the concept of nothing becomes a bit more complex. Quantum mechanics introduces us to the idea of wave-particle duality, suggesting that matter exists in two states. It's from this duality that the matter we're familiar with arises, transitioning from the quantum to the classical. This transition process, though well described by mathematical tools, still harbors underlying mysteries. Thus, in the realm of quantum mechanics, nothing takes on a whole new meaning. So, what have we learned about the concept of nothingness in the universe? Well, it's certainly not as simple as it sounds. We've delved into the intriguing world of modern physics, exploring the role of nothingness from the Big Bang theory to quantum mechanics. We've seen how nothing at the base point isn't an empty state, but a singularity where all known physical laws break down, and the concept of infinity takes the reins. We've also grappled with the questions surrounding singularity, from its inception to its explosive force that might have given birth to our universe. We've questioned whether it even exists, or if it's just a mathematical anomaly. And we've discovered that nothingness and being may not be sequential but simultaneous, constantly participating in the evolution of the universe. In quantum mechanics we've seen how nothingness is an integral part of wave-particle duality, with the familiar matter arising from the quantum to classical transition. Though nothing may seem like a simple concept, it's a fundamental part of our understanding of the universe, full of infinite possibilities and complex questions. Dive into the depths of the universe, and you'll find yourself entangled in an enigmatic dance between the quantum and classical worlds. These two sides of the universe coexist, constantly transforming into one another, a dance as old as time itself. Now, let's take a moment to consider a concept that might seem a bit paradoxical. Something out of nothing and nothing out of something. It's a lot like a magic trick, isn't it? But in the realm of quantum mechanics this isn't just a trick, but a reality. There are phenomena where the causal rate, the relationship between cause and effect doesn't apply, or even where it's infinite. It's as if the rules we're so used to just don't exist. And here's the real kicker. In this quantum world matter can just pop into existence in a vacuum as if out of thin air, a creation out of nothing. But what could be the source of this spontaneity? Distinguished minds have pondered over these quantum peculiarities, one of them being Stephen Hawking. Hawking proposed a theory that might appear as a plot twist in our understanding of the universe. His theory suggests that particles can spontaneously appear and disappear in a vacuum, a phenomenon known as quantum fluctuations. This might seem like a magic trick, but it's a well-observed fact in the quantum world. It's as if matter is created out of nothing and then returns to nothing once again. This is a fascinating alignment with our discussion of the state of nothing. Could it be that the underlying mechanism of quantum mechanics is this state of nothing? The strangeness of the quantum world, its defiance of causality, its particles popping in and out of existence, all seem to resonate with the concept of nothing. The quantum world, in all its weirdness, might be hinting at the unimaginable, that nothingness itself could be the foundation of our reality. Nothingness, like existence, is a state, devoid of material information, physical laws, and the continuity of time. 
but what if this state of nothingness could continue to be annihilated? Let's explore this thought. The universe, in its intricate design, presents us with a fascinating symmetry between existence and non-existence. These states, though seemingly opposing, could continue in a cycle of annihilation, leading us back to a state of nothingness. Imagine this, a cycle where nothingness itself is immutable, constantly returning to its original state. But here's the twist, if nothingness can remain unchanged in annihilation, why can't existence? In this grand scheme, both being and non-being could exist in a state of perpetual annihilation and non-annihilation. Could this be the universe's ultimate paradox? Or perhaps, it's an indication that in a universe where both being and non-being are annihilated and non-annihilated, neither state is truly paradoxical. Could the universe in all its complexity be designed on a foundation of nothingness? Ever pondered the intriguing concept of creation and nothingness? Let's embark on an intellectual journey to explore this idea. Imagine being a creator, initially uninformed about the state of nothingness, yet yearning for a state that requires no resources but can bring forth a universe. This state, remarkably, has the potential to annihilate the universe it creates yet maintain a cosmic state and achieve stable evolution. It's an enigma, a paradox that dances on the edge of our comprehension. Now let's introduce a new player into this cosmic game, the fourth level self-referential creator. This entity, it's hypothesized, might have already cracked this riddle, discovering this elusive design that balances creation and annihilation in an elegant dance of cosmic forces. The possibility of such a design existing is awe-inspiring, isn't it? Mathematical set theory brings a fascinating perspective to this concept. Let's first consider two contrasting types of sets. The first type, which we'll call set A, consists of all sets that contain themselves. Its opposite, set B, is a set that does not contain itself. These two sets are intriguing because they seem to mirror the state of annihilation between existence and non-existence that we're exploring. Set A is a specially constructed set. When sets of two opposite states like existence and non-existence fuse into one, the resulting set is still a set containing itself, in other words it circles back to set A. This state closely resembles our concept of annihilation between existence and non-existence. Nothingness corresponds to the set that contains itself, and existence corresponds to the set that does not contain itself. Now let's delve into set B, the set that does not contain itself. When we ask if set B contains itself, we encounter a paradox. If set B does contain itself, then by definition, it does not. Conversely, if set B does not contain itself, then it does. This paradoxical state, where set B both belongs and does not belong to itself, mirrors the universe's ability to be annihilated into nothingness while simultaneously maintaining its own state. This paradoxical state is none other than Russell's paradox. Named after the British philosopher and logician Bertrand Russell, this paradox was a groundbreaking revelation in the world of mathematics. It caused quite a stir, leading to what is often referred to as the first crisis in mathematics. Yet, Despite the upheaval it caused, Russell's paradox also provides us with a thought-provoking parallel to our concept of creation and nothingness. Russell's paradox, a cornerstone of mathematical crisis, parallels our concept of creation and nothingness. It's a profound illustration of how mathematics can reflect and even enhance our understanding of abstract philosophical concepts. So, as we delve deeper into the mysteries of the universe, Let's keep in mind the unexpected places where answers or at least intriguing questions might be found. Now let's delve into the role of self-referential sets and causal logic in this grand scheme. Mathematics terms the description of itself as self-referential, with sets containing themselves being known as self-referential sets. But here's the twist. In logical systems, causal logic, the backbone of reasoning, falls short when it comes to self-reference. This intriguing phenomenon links back to Zeno's paradox, which showcases that self-referentiality is inherently infinite. Just imagine a line that keeps dividing itself into smaller parts, going on forever. It's mind-boggling, isn't it? This is the infinity we encounter in self-referentiality. Ultimately, for mathematics to make sense and maintain its logical integrity, it must sidestep self-referentiality. This is akin to how physics avoids singularities, those points in space-time where the laws of physics cease to be useful. So, the Creator might have shared this design with us, only we may not fully comprehend it yet. This concept of self-reference can be likened to an ant on a road. You may perceive this ant as a member of a larger colony, a part of a whole. Similarly, 
everything in the universe at the very least originates from the universe itself, the grand whole. But here's the twist. Understanding this whole becomes a complex task as we ourselves are part of it. We can't fully observe or comprehend it, just as an ant cannot wholly grasp the intricacies of its colony. We can't step outside the universe to examine it, just as an ant can't step outside its colony. This leads us into a maze of self-referentiality, where we are simultaneously the observer and the observed. Therefore the concept of infinity becomes a relative one, presenting a profound property of the whole. Now let's delve into the intriguing intersection of quantum mechanics and self-reference. The enigma of quantum mechanics often lies in its all-encompassing nature, the whole space, the entire system, and its non-locality. This is where the concept of self-reference steps in, illuminating some facets of this quantum mystery. In a self-referential space each point is defined by the entirety of the space. Imagine a cosmic game of tag where every position is it, and they're all interconnected, forming a complex web of quantum entanglement. It's a bit like a community where everyone knows everyone, and any action has ripple effects throughout the whole. But what happens when the information of one position leaks out, like a secret whispered too loud? The intricate web of entanglement shatters, and in that breakage, uncertainty is born, expressed through the very positions that once held the web together. As spatial information leaks, the entanglement breaks, and the uncertainty expressed by position is born. But, you might ask, where does this wholeness come from? A valid question indeed. The universe, in its infinite complexity, is a vast tapestry woven together by countless individual threads. Each thread, an individual entity, contributes to the grandeur of the whole. Yet these individual entities can also be segmented from the whole, coexisting in a dual state of being both apart and independent of the whole. The origin of this wholeness, this unified entirety, is a thought-provoking conundrum. It might be understood as an inherent property of the universe, an integral part of its existence. The whole and the individuals, like two sides of a coin, are intrinsically linked, their existence intertwined in a cosmic dance of unity and separation. This duality, this enigma of self-reference, invites us to delve deeper into the mysteries of the universe, to question and explore the very fabric of our existence. So the enigma of self-reference and its existence continues to provoke thought and inspire exploration in the world of science. In the grand scheme of energy, all elements are unified, identical to themselves. Imagine a vast, endless cycle where energy in all its forms returns to a state of zero, yet paradoxically encapsulates everything. It's a state of simultaneous existence and non-existence, a concept as intriguing as it is mysterious. Picture the sixth level where everything is one and the same with itself. You might ask, what is self? A question humanity grapples with yet remains largely unanswered. But perhaps there's no need for further debate, we are in essence intricate algorithms, birthed from the womb of the natural universe. Our most unique ability, the constant awareness and understanding of our own existence. A perpetual journey of self-discovery, in a universe where energy, in its ultimate form, is both everything and nothing. Remember we are a part of this grand design, not separate but integrated, each moment, a testament to the miraculous interplay of existence and non-existence.